everyone. Great to connect with you again today. This Sunday, we gather for worship outdoors at 8.30, indoors at 11, and the 11 o'clock service will be streamed as usual. This Sunday, I'll be preaching from Genesis chapter 4 about the escalation of sin's consequences, particularly as it relates to how human beings treat each other. I'm calling this Sunday sermon, Sorry, Not Sorry. So the road construction on Route 19 in front of the church is still going on. I thought they were ready to pave a week ago, but it hasn't happened yet. What has been a bit hard to understand, is it's been hard to understand because it looks as if the road is ready. They've torn off the old road, they've filled in the deeper holes, everything looks ready to go. But as they work today, I begin to understand why they haven't paved yet. There are places along the road where there are sewer grates, and when they tore up the old road, road, they left little squares of the previous road around those grates. I just assumed that they were going to be difficult places to address, so they would just leave them and pave around them. Obviously, that's not the case, because when I walked out this morning to see how they were doing and what they were doing, I was met by the distinctive sound of a jackhammer going through concrete. And I discovered that they are now addressing those places that had previously been left untouched. All I can assume is that if they didn't address these, then the paving of the road would not only be inconsistent, but would mean that the road wasn't fully what it should be. And once again, I see a spiritual analogy. When we come to faith in Christ, our sins are forgiven and we're set free. God begins the work of tearing up the old ways of thinking, the old ways of acting, the old ways of responding, all the ways in which we've operated most of our lives. And even though it's painful and difficult work, we're so grateful for what God is doing because we know it's leading to something much better. We're always surprised, however, that God never settles for good enough. And even though because the work of God in us can be painful and demanding and challenging, we have a tendency to be fine with that. We recognize that there are still a lot of rough edges to our lives. We know that there are still issues that we're hanging on to that are destructive. We see how self-absorbed we can be. We are the first-hand witnesses to our temper and our greed, to our jealousy and our lust. But to think of dealing with all these things seems overwhelming. And so we tend to be willing and sometimes even desire that God would just let it be. Our sins are forgiven. We have promise of eternal life. Isn't that enough? After all, we're a lot better than we used to be. We're a lot more like Jesus than we were previously. We've come such a long way. Surely that's good enough. But God's design for us is always more than good enough. God's design for us is not just to make us different, but to make us like himself. God wants to remove all, from us all those parts of our lives that are destructive to us and to others. God wants to set us free from all the chains of sin that hold us captive, even the small chains, or at least the, the ones that seem small. And he wants this for us, not because he somehow enjoys making us go through painful things, but because he wants us to experience the joy and the freedom and the abundant life of his redemptive grace. This is what John means, I think, when he writes to it in his first letter. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. All sin. John goes on to say, Dear friends, now we are children of God. What we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him for that day purify themselves, just as he is pure in this day. And these words of John are an echo of the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And Jesus doesn't mean that we never sin or that we never make a mistake. He's not talking about perfect the way we tend to think of it. He's in essence saying, don't settle for good enough. Surrender yourself to your heavenly father that in his loving grace, he might continue to set you free from the ways of sin in order to make you more and more like himself and to fill you more and more with himself. The continued work of God in us is not optional to a journey of Christ. It's central to his plan of setting us free, of making us new, of giving us life abundant now and forever. It's what he wants for you and it's what he wants for me. And the question that continually confronts us is, will we trust him enough to let him do that amazing work? Father, thank you that you desire more for us than we do for ourselves. Help us to willingly and joyfully surrender ourselves 
to you that we might be set free to live in the joy and love of your renewing grace. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.